So now that we've got the blade and everything all set up and ready, uh, there's two more things I need to address. I need to address the switch because it would be nice to be able to turn it on and off. And I need to address the blade guides. And I think um, today we're going to start working on the blade guide. <laughs> we're going to start working on the switch. I want to get this paddle switch installed in here like that. I'm going to flip it on and off easy. And uh, the way that the original worked is there was a folded piece of sheet metal in here that protruded from this hole and stayed in place when you remove the casing off. So I'm going to take the case off and we can take a look at how that goes together and see if we can make one because this saw didn't come with it. Apparently some of these had a shelf for the, uh, the sanding wheel too, but I don't see a facility for that. I might make one to attach to these mounts later, but that'll be another thing. Another project. Okay, let's put the case off. And we can see there's two holes in the casing here and here where the switch attached to, and the wires would come up from behind this shield and then attach to the switch. So I think what I'm going to do is measure the distance between these holes center to center and then see what our depth is. And we can see if from that we'd be able to figure out how to fold up a piece of sheet metal to, um, to fit in there properly. So let me grab some tools and we'll see what we can come up with here. I just got a, a precision ruler here, so we'll see how that does. This isn't a very precise part, so it doesn't really matter if we're just close. There's a lot of slop and how the case fits on too, so close will be good enough. That looks about right. So that's 12 centimeters to the, the back there. Uh, yeah, 12 centimeters. And it looks like the holes are equidistant, like they're centered on the square here. So that should be pretty easy to bend up. Uh, we got for the opening here, that's seven centimeters square. So seven square. 12 in depth, and then we just need center to center on the holes, which I suppose I could have done before I closed up the casing. This would probably be better with a pair of calipers, but I think what I'll do is I'll turn the machine and just get in behind it here. And that's 10 centimeters on center. So I opened up on shape and threw together a simple drawing of the bracket that I want to make. Uh, and did I need to use CAD for this? No, it's totally overkill. But it's nice to have a drawing to work off of, and it's cold in the workshop right now, so it's nice to work in the office. So what I've got here is a simple sketch of the profile right here with uh, the basic dimensions that we figured out to make it work. Um, then I turned that into a sheet metal object using on-shape sheet metal functions to extrude that and get all the bend dimensions and stuff in there as accurate as possible. And then I added the sketch for the switch opening, extruded that to make a hole, sketched in the mounting hole locations, and then used the built-in hole tool to punch those. So now we have our bracket looking like what we want. And uh, one of the cool features of Onshape is that it gives you a flat layout of where all your bends need to be to make the part exactly the way you want. So I threw that into a drawing which will load eventually. There it is. And this has all the critical dimensions on here. And since it's a mirrored piece, I only need dimensions from one end because I can duplicate those on the other and there shouldn't be too much error. Uh, so we'll take this down to the shop and see if we can make something pretty close to this. All right, so we got our drawing down here. We got some stock material just out of the scrap bin and uh, some implements of destruction. We're gonna see about laying this out then we're going to cut it off on the shear and then uh, we'll drill out the uh, bolt holes dremel out the hole for the switch and get it mounted into the bandsaw let's see how we do okay that should be our blank 
once we have that sheared out, then uh, I can mark out the rest of the locations and we can get to bending. Now what's going to be the best way to do this? I don't know. I should be cutting this on the other side because now the other, the off cut's going to peel and it's going to curl. I'll have to deal with that after. Okay, I'm just going to continue this cut on of this piece of scrap. That goes back into the bin. The cut came out pretty good. We're pretty close to the line there. Close enough for what we're doing. There's probably better ways to shear this. But I don't have the tools or the know-how. So this is how we're doing it. Okay, close enough. Now we just need to mark out our cut locations and then get to bending. So our first location is going to be 30.2 millimeters from the end. I'm just going to use the calipers to lock that in. Lots of people say you shouldn't scribe with your calipers, but it's a really easy way to do it. And if your calipers aren't that valuable, then uh, it's not a big loss if you damage them. It's a good reason to keep a cheap set of calipers on hand. Realistically, I'm only scribing with enough force to wipe off the Sharpie anyway, so I'm not likely to do any damage here. And our next mark is 149.43. It would be best to do all the layout from one side so I'm not compounding any error, but I don't have any tools large enough for that, so this is how we're going to do it. And again, it'll be close enough for this project. Okay, so we got our whole locations marked, or our bend locations marked out. I suppose I can mark out the whole locations while I'm here as well. Uh, that's just 15 mil in from the edge. Let's do that. There we go. So we have our whole locations marked out. And we'll measure the center on this one later so we can center it on what we end up with for the final bend. These are great when you can't afford a proper press brake. All these do is they magnetically attach to the vise like that. And like that. Then all we need to do is line up our bends on the center of the tool and then start bending. So let's see what's my best order of operations here. I'm not gonna have a lot of room in the throat for this uh, is that even going to be possible possibly not eventually all right here's what i came up with this is pretty hokey we're over at my press which needs a lot of work it was given to me by a friend a long time ago and i never actually got around to making it more useful than it is but uh, it's better than no press so i've got a piece of scrap here and we're going to see how this works. All I've done is I've taken some one inch square tube and used that to simulate the, the jaws of the vise. And uh, we're going to see if I can actually make a bend on this without ruining my piece of steel.
Evidently not. A few moments later. All right, with a bit of jury rigging later, we have this abomination. Um, let's see if it works. I've got the piece loaded. I've got some extra lighting in here so I can hopefully see what I'm doing. And we're going to see if we get a decent bend on this. Here we go. Well, would you look at that? That is a perfectly serviceable bend in a piece of scrap metal. So let it be known that with a bunch of hokey setups and cheap crap, you too can make perfectly mediocre results. Let's try it on the real deal. Okay, we've got a halfway decent bend there. Let's try bend number two. That I did not see coming. It's possible that this setup just isn't ideal. Who'd have thought? Well, that's about as good as could be expected. I think we can correct for that. Then we can do the flanges in the vise. Let's see if we can just bend that by hand. There. A little bit of extra work. It'll be good as new. Or close enough. Okay, we'll do the flanges and then I will be right back with a new setup. So these markings came out great. And uh, if they were on the right side of the steel, then uh, they'd probably be even better. I'm going to go transfer them back to the other side and then we'll bend these up. We'll have to do the same thing for the drill holes, of course, because we'll be punching those afterwards. All right, everything's remarked. Let's try and bend it. You won't be able to see what I'm doing because I'm doing it behind the vise here, but. It's very much like what we did on the press. Okay, a little overbent on that one. Let's see how we came out dimension wise. That is 75, and this is 70. So this is over, this is over dimension. Something went wrong. This is only supposed to be 70. This is not going to fit in the bandsaw. I'm gonna take a look. Yep, somewhere something went horribly wrong, and this does not fit. Well, I found the error. Turns out, um, when I was talking about getting all that lined up and how the error, if I uh, measure the length carefully, the error measuring from both ends won't matter. Well, turns out it mattered because when I measured out 366.8 millimeters in length, somehow I managed to measure 375. So that works out. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna just cut this out. We're gonna take a strip out of the center and uh, we're just gonna shorten it by the amount we need and then weld it back together and pretend it never happened. Well, it's a damn sight uglier than it was when we started, but uh, 
I think it'll clean up okay. And I think it'll do the part. I'm going to test fit it and see if it's going to actually fit in the bandsaw. And then we can clean it up and we can cut those holes. I'll need to round over the corners a bit to make it fit in there because the corners are, are chamfered. And I didn't account for that uh, on, the, uh, on the print. But uh, I think this will do. It'll do certainly enough to get a power button on there. And I think if we hide the ugly side, it'll be all right. I'm going to be using quarter 20 rivet nuts with this, so that means I'm going to need an 11 30 seconds drill to get those to stay put. All right, I think those will do. I'm going to grab a rivet nut to check. Hmm, not quite. A bit of deburring on that. That'll do. All right, so next up before we put the rivet nuts in, I think, is to cut the slot for the switch. Almost made it with one blade. Nice. It's actually a little bit loose in there. But uh, I think a couple of shots of hot glue in there. I'll never know. I won't tell me if you don't. All right, well, that turned out a lot worse than I was expecting. Here's what we got. Can you see that? Yeah, it's kind of ugly, but it does fit in here. Like that, see, look at that. Beautiful. So now we just need to put the rib nuts in and mount it to the machine and then this part of it is done and I can work on the electrical. And I get to use my new toy. Now which way are these going to go in? We want the crimp on the back side. got two nuts in the back here that we can use. I'm going to try to fit that to the machine. We'll put the switch in and I will do the wiring another time. Okay, let's see how this works. Let's get these finger tight for now. Not too shabby, except for the whole mounting it sideways thing, but maybe we can pretend I did that on purpose. Anyway, that is the bracket done. The next thing to do would be the electrical, so I can get this wired up so the switch actually does something. And, um, yeah, coming along. Three days later. All right, so this didn't work out very well, but I think we have a solution. I'm going to cut this down 
and then we'll refasten it about 17 mil shorter and then I will put a 3D printed plate on the top here that will match the cutout in the bandsaw. Put the switch into that the right way up and then we'll see how that does. So I'm going to cut this now and hopefully that turns out good enough that we can rejoin it later. It'll fit in the shear now. Well, that side will fit in the shear now. Let's do that. It's a lot easier than doing it with the hand shears. One eternity later. All right, so I didn't 3D print any more of that nonsense, but suffice it to say, basically everything was going wrong. What I did was I ended up, I believe I had a recording of this, I cut down the original post to two pieces, I riveted them together, I 3D printed a switch plate so that everything fits and it's nice and upright, and I wired everything in, and uh, now I'm ready to do the assembly, test it, and make sure it actually works. So let me set you down, and we'll do that. All right, final assembly and test. I have the saw unplugged while I'm doing this. All right, I think it looks pretty good. Plug it in. There we go. There we go. Bandsaw with a working switch. I think that's the end of this for now. Next project will be to work on these really terrible bandsaw guides, <laughs> blade guides. See if I can come up with something a bit better uh, and less noisy, hopefully. Uh, and I'll have to do bearings on this because these are incredibly noisy. But for now, I have a semi-functional bandsaw. Thanks for watching.